Dave's Five Hot Takes. Yeah. Okay, so we're back here with Dave's Five Faves with Corey Wong. Um, dude, this was. I say this to all the guests. I need to stop saying this. It's one of my favorite parts of doing this podcast is like it's doing these deep dives because all of my guests I have on, we talk about five of their songs that I choose. And and this was really yours was really fun because it's so diverse and it was really tricky. I can show you the sheet. I wrote like it was literally like front and back songs because it would be like, oh, that's the one. Oh, it'd be like, oh, that's but that one. So this was tricky. So huge props to you because I really had a wonderfully hard time trying to figure out the five that I wanted to sort of visit. So first one, talk to me about Golden. Golden was a fun tune because that started as I met a friend in uh, digitally over the internet, a guy from Berlin named Marty Fisher. He and I started collaborating and writing stuff together. He is kind of like my German counterpart. He's he and I. I'm the American version of him. He's the German version of me. I when I did an album called Corey Wong and the Green Screen Band, I did a Kickstarter, and one of the pledge options was that I would I could I would record on one of your songs. Oh wow! Marty pledged for that. And sent me a few of his songs just saying, hey, whichever one of these you think would be cool or, or that you like the most, just record on one of these. And I hit him back. I was just like, look, I'm going to record on all these. Oh, that's great. I'm just going to I'm just gonna play on all these because they're all dope. And I love what you do. He and I just hit it off immediately. And we just became close friends over the internet. Eventually started working a lot more together. And I played on his whole record. We did a bunch of writing together. And there's a, an instrumental tune that we put together. And eventually, I wanted I was working on trying to put a, a collaboration together with Cody Fry. And I was thinking, oh, this instrumental tune would be cool to do. It's originally called Bar Bernstein Gold. And I thought, what, what about the idea of Golden? Like, you know, everybody looking, you know, and Cody and I, he, he had a, the majority of the lyric ideas and stuff. And we went back and forth on it. But that was just the concept of it. And started as an instrumental tune. And then we morphed it into a, a an actual song. And that was really fun because Cody and I collaborated over the internet with that. Nate Smith played drums on it uh, from a studio in New York. And it was it was just super fun to be able to do that. And Cody and I are such good friends that it was fun to just go back and forth remake it remotely and then do a music video for it, which was really fun too. That that video is so good. <laughs> you know, something fun that I love that you guys did too is Cody had you play on a couple of his tunes with uh, Dynamo. Yeah. And if you, and anybody that's listening, they're just so good where he featured you and there's, I listen to those two songs all the time. Golden is I, like that and this next song got so, I knew it when I, cause I, I love these two songs. But I knew when I clicked on Golden yesterday, I was like, you know what's going to happen. It's golden, golden. It's never going to leave your head. Love that song. All right, second song, Limited World. That's it. These songs are so hooky. Thanks, man. So that one actually also started as an instrumental tune. I had an idea for an instrumental thing. And then it just, for whatever reason, I, it wasn't giving me the thing that I wanted to 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 pass the full test. It's like it has all the elements, but something is still not hitting for me. I got to make it a vocal tune. And Caleb, we talked about Caleb Holly in a podcast and how his band beat mine in the Battle of Bands when mm. we were in ninth or tenth grade or whatever. But he and I are good friends, and we've talked about collaborating for a long time. And I thought it would be really fun to have him on the tune. And I basically just sent him the instrumental version and said, go wild, do your thing. He sent me a couple ideas. Ooh, let's do this. Ooh, let's do this. Ooh, let's do this. And he and I went back and forth on it and he recorded all the vocals from his place in New York. But again, that started as an instrumental thing that eventually we made a new form and I chopped up the form a little bit to make it match the vocal mm -hmm. thing. And it was really fun to be able to just let him loose on that. Caleb, um, maybe more than any other artist in my Spotify playlisting. So like when really? Spotify puts together my discovery weeklies, cause I have a couple of its tunes, like in playlists of just stuff I like that I listen to. Yeah. He is always in there and it's 90% of the time I'm mowing the yard driving and I'm like, God, who's this? Oh, it's Caleb again. I don't yeah. know. I've never met Caleb, but he is literally maybe the most synced into my playlist artist on Spotify. Nice. He's so, his voice is 
insane. Like it's it truly is. intimidatingly good. Yeah. Um, okay. Talk to me about meditation. This melody, it's really funny. I had a, I had a song that was exactly the same melody. Really? Exactly. Yes, exactly. How much do and, I owe you then? No, no, I never put it out. Like it was just an idea that sat in my folder <laughs> for for like a while. And it was so funny because I could just never, I even played it with an artist and she, and she was like, I like that. I just don't know. And we couldn't get it going. And I listened to that and I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad Corey made something out of this melody because it was, it was the melody. And I just could never go anywhere. I'd mess with it. And then I heard you. It's like, oh dude, Corey, this is amazing. Nice. That is something that, one day I was just sitting in the kitchen, messing around on the guitar. Actually, I was I was playing "Change the World" by Eric Clapton. Mm, and yep, if you listen has, to those yeah. side by sides, mm -hmm. oh, okay, that makes sense. That yeah. I was playing yeah. that, and then eventually got into a different mood and came into the the meditation thing. And that on my version, the Corey Wong version of meditation, mm -hmm. it's pretty much just that part. Mm -hmm. And then I was hanging out, kind of did that. I recorded a version of it, mm -hmm. and then. Literally two days later, I was in New York playing on the late show with Colbert in the house band with John Batiste. And we were just up in his dressing room, green room. He and I became really close friends and we jam a lot. We play, we connect deep on a musical thing. And it's really fun. So I was up there in his dressing room. I was just playing that. He was like, oh my gosh, that sounds, is it we, oh, that's cool. It's like, what if we went here with it? And then he played this other bridge that kind of mm -hmm. does a modulation, goes mm -hmm. into this. It, it takes it to a completely new place. So that was kind of then a new version of that song that we put out on an album together called Meditations. But that kind of that song just morphed by us then putting our two things together on that. And it was so natural. And then just having a thing where it it's over the progression, it's 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 jam bandy and you know, it's actually more jam band than it is jazz, I think. Mm. Although some people might categorize it more as jazz, but I think the way that we think about it and play it, I mean, it's all names don't really matter as far as a stamp of what something is. But yeah, that one was really fun to to develop. It's so fun to hear you talk about that because I think those of us who, and, and like yourself, when you co-write a song, like you think about, you sit down and you start playing something and then, you know, Corey or some, you know, Cody, somebody goes, Oh, well, this melody. And you're like, Oh yeah. What about this melody? No, those are, you know, you're playing, but it's so fascinating to think about two guys sitting in a room, writing an instrumental together because yeah. you're doing the same thing. It's just not vocal. It's like, oh, what if it, and then you play it. Yeah. Oh, and then I think I would go, that's such a fun image to think about and something I've never done. Like I've never, I've written some instrumentals, but I've never co-written an instrumental, which would be so fascinating because you don't, you're not worrying about, literally the words you're saying you're just yeah. like no what are the melodies that seem to go together yeah and it, it, you're relying on a different sense of emotion and it you know in a lot of ways it's 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 way easier to write instrumental music to me because you don't have to worry about the wordplay the right. cliches of certain vocal f or you know word phrases or right. the way that the phonetic sound of words yeah there's just you're not worrying about as many things yeah you're diving deeper into the the musical visceral response. And that's also, I think, a testament to how I've been able to write and record so much music in the last couple of years because I'm not doing very much vocal stuff. Hmm. So it actually, it's just an extra thing that I don't have to think about as much. Right. Did y'all, and, and did that see where y'all recorded the majority of that record, you and John? Was it mostly live, like mostly kind of, in the room spontaneity or had y'all worked out a lot of it or actually the thing, the fun thing about the meditations album is we did, we recorded that album top to bottom, no stopping all six songs. We just sat down, boom, album top to finish. No stop. Like the, the, the pro tools just rolled for Holy 35 cow. minutes or whatever, 40 minutes, whatever it was. And, um, beforehand, so John and I had a concept for it. Okay, here's these six tunes that are just jumping points. They're each these one word things, meditations, prayer, home, um, teardrops, lullaby, and, and relationships. And they each have their things, but then it's just jumping points from there. So meditations, kind of two sections, and then it's free land from there. Hmm. 
Prayer is just kind of one melody and then it has a jumping point. So basically what we did is we had Samuel, who's a B3 player, and Nate Smith, who played drums percussion on it. We just showed them the the things up until the jumping point. And that was it. Okay, here's how this tune goes. And then from there, we just kind of, we go and we explore. And this is the vision for the project. Yeah. This is kind of everybody's role in the thing. This is the conceptual thing. And then we just, for uh, th- the session was literally 35 minutes, boom, recorded straight down. We hung out for a while, came back the next, uh, came back the next day, the next night. So John and I were recording stuff for his kind of album proper or in the daytime. We went and recorded the taping for the late show with Colbert. And then at night, we came in for like an hour and a half, recorded the Meditations album, listened back, hung out. Next day, same thing. So three days in a row, we recorded just top to bottom. We recorded the album. And three of the songs are from night one. Three of the songs are from night three. We didn't use anything from night two for whatever That's reason. That's amazing. Did, did you see things that consistently developed in each of the songs? Like yeah, by the third there, was, there was... For the songs that we used on from night one, it just felt like there was a really captured tension and release. There was just more tension and release in those tunes. And then there was a couple songs that it felt like, oh, we we kind of did need to work out this a little bit more. And we had two run-throughs. And then by the time it got to the third night, we knew loosely form-wise what to expect. And just the arc, the dynamic arc of the tunes were just much more connected. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. So, so off of, uh, which I know, you know, you didn't write, but the version of Blackbird off the acoustic oh. record is so cool, man. Thanks. Tell me about that. It's, it's incredible. So that for me is a song for years that I've used as something to just kind of calm me down hmm. for whatever reason. It's one of those songs that if I'm bugging out or if I'm, if I have a lot of anxiety, there's a few different versions of it. I'll just I'll I have a playlist. The the original Beatles version, the Sarah McLaughlin version, and the Brad Meldow solo piano version. And I just for whatever reason, I, I love just listening down and it this the song has something to it that that soothes me. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do a version of it. And in quarantine, I was just starting to play more of my acoustic instruments and playing my acoustic guitar, and also just kind of wanting to experiment. I, there's one song that I sang on a record called Today I'm Going to Get Myself a Real Job. And yeah, I was but- kind of find, trying to figure out what, if I were to sing, which I don't plan on becoming singer guy, but if I were to sing, what is it about my voice that works? I don't love the way my voice sounds when I'm singing out, but when I do a more speak singing, kind of Kermit the Frog, Ringo Starr, cake thing, I, I think it's got a real character to yeah, it, it does. Which, is, which is fun. So I wanted to try to lean into that and I figured I'll just do a version of Blackbird. So I did that and then wanted to add some of my own little nuances and quirks to it. So really honoring the original, but adding some of my own personal thing to it. It's really cool. Thanks. It keeps building, which I love. Like it really, it has an energy at the beginning you don't see coming. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. I thought it'd be fun to add strings, add a clarinet because it just, for some reason feels unexpected but also when you hear it in there it makes total sense yeah and a little bit of piano and background vocal arranging and stuff yeah it's it's beautiful and then the last song and th- you're the only human being that i know that can that can say this you have a song named after you that you also played <laughs> on it this is still i remember thinking i mean i think jack is a genius from both i mean I, he's just such a awesome quirky dude but i think the fact that that you got that Wolfbeck has a song called Corey Wong to me is just the shot of all shots, <laughs> you know. And and uh, talk to me about that song. The video is so fun, and you know, as all Wolfbeck things are. But talk to me about that song. So that was the first album where I was like, you know, really part of the like, you know, becoming part of the band, and that song kind of solidified the thing, and the Jack kind of gave me the word, you know. And it was fun because the first time I ever played music with Joe Dart was we were jamming at this little house and it was 
it ended up on a Wolfpack tour vlog video thing or something. And it was just tour vlog, Corey Wong or something. And it was just us jamming, playing this tune that we, that Jack had a couple ideas for. Theo is hitting a spoon on a coffee cup or something. And I think Jack maybe had a loop or something going. I don't remember. And Joey was playing a, I don't remember what he was playing, some little keyboard. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but we were just playing at this place. And eventually the fans just started calling it Corey Wong song. And it wasn't an, a, a, you know, an official song or anything. But then when we were doing the tracking session for the beautiful game, that album, we just didn't really have a name for it. And Jack didn't have a name for it. So he's just like, this is called Corey Wong. <laughs> <laughs> the fans named the song, I guess. That's which is amazing. So when y'all when y'all do those songs, I mean, um, does he does every does everybody kind of bring different melodies, or is that something that somebody sussed out before? How like for that song specifically, was it the same song y'all had jammed? Yeah, with a couple different nuanced changes. And then one thing that Jack did that was I thought was really interesting. None of us knew he was going to do it until I listened to it on Spotify the day it came out. He used a section of like the bridge section from a live show that we did in LA. He just boom, took that and put that in the middle of the studio recording, which I thought was really cool because there was a different, there was a different bridge when we actually recorded the song in the studio. It was a little bit different. That was actually very similar to the tour vlog video. There's kind of a, a little bit of a bridgey thing in the tour vlog video that we did at the session but I think what ended up happening at the LA show was cooler. And Jack just found a way to to mix that into the actual studio recording and then weave back into it, which w- was really fun. But most of the time, Jack will come with some sort of idea. Hey, here's this idea for this song. He'll have an A section, B section. And then we kind of work out our own parts or little things that go above it or stuff that, you know, that works throughout. Or sometimes Woody will have a demo that he's made that he's sent out of something and then we build our own stuff around it or I I have demos with fearless flyers I end up making pretty more fleshed out demos oh wow um and Theo will sometimes just have straight up songs yeah here's the song and then we go in and do the thing but a lot of times it's just here's an A section here's a B section ooh give me a little uh melody that sounds like this reference over the top or oh give me the Give me the Dave Williams, Michael Jackson guitar thing on this part. Oh, give me the Prince thing on this. Oh, give me the whatever. And we'll we'll kind of reference different things and get into something. We'll just kind of jam the A section, loop the A section until everybody's got something that feels like it's working together. We'll each try stuff to see what's perking each other's ears. And ooh, that's really cool. All right, yeah, you do that. I'll change this. And then move on to the B section, practice that, and then see how the form flows and then go from there. Because so much of it, I mean, like your your own songs, uh, with that song again, Corey Wong in particular is, you know, it has really specific melodies. It's not just guys jamming. Like yeah. there's themes, and so it's so fascinating to me that, you know, y'all are, and which is what I think makes not only your music great but their music great too. Is there's a real intentionality to like, no, this needs to have a melody. It can't just be like a cool vibe for four minutes. Yeah, you know, like give them a A section, B section, C, and then let's call it. You know, like, which is and, and it's very uh, articulate. You yeah, know I mean, it's not just ding, nick, ding, nick, you know, do, yeah. do, 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 you know, it's yeah. got themes that you can really go like, I know what that part is. Oh, that's the B part. Yes. Cool. And, and there's, this- yeah, there's specific things. And I think the difference sometimes you'll, or I, I will see people play something that's in the realm, but it just sounds like jamming. Nobody's got a thing. Yeah. So I think what we're always doing is trying to find the hook within whatever we're doing. It's it's very much parts that are a thing. It's not just playing over a chord. Maybe there's one person. If there's a couple really strong hooks, then it can allow for a couple people to be wild cards, weaving in and out, doing whatever, or or uh, floaters around the thing. But for the most part, if it's a rhythm section thing, the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that it is very much structured parts of something. Sometimes it's just modular, IKEA style. This goes here. It's out here. This goes here. It's right. out here. And um, yeah, I, I think that's one of the things that we're always very intentional about is, well, I know that's one of the things that we're always intentional about is 
making sure that something is a thing. How if somebody's covering this song, they should be playing this. That's a great way to put that. Yeah. Which I think is what makes, you know, again, not not just their music, but your music so good is it it is their songs. They're yeah. not jams. You know, I think sure. that's kind of the fatal error of a lot of those bands who've tried that and not had success. It's like, well, that's cool for eight bars. It's not cool for a hundred bars. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because sure. something can vibe, you know, but it needs to have a point at some point, something that people can really latch on to. Well, dude, thank you for doing this. My pleasure. Thanks it. for having me. You're the man. These five hot takes. Yeah. yeah.